This is Sunday Focus, a weekly public affairs program that looks at the topics affecting our society and the people who are making a change in the community each and every day. The people who have vision for the next generation. Sunday Focus presents new challenges for us, keeping you informed with topics of local and regional interest. Now the host of Sunday Focus, Christine Manica. Good morning. Coming up on this edition of Sunday Focus, I'll sit down in the studio with Sioux Falls Mayor Paul Tenhaken. The city of Sioux Falls is a thriving, growing community. Recently, around 7,000 people just this year alone have been rapidly moving to Sioux Falls. With growth comes some challenges, including infrastructure, housing, and crime rates. Sioux Falls Mayor Paul Tenhaken joins the program to talk about life after the city elections, his goals for 2023, and goals throughout his second term. He also talks about the recent snowstorms throughout the city of Sioux Falls. The amount of snow in the city of Sioux Falls this winter season so far has not been seen in a number of years. In fact, Mayor Ted Haken is already thinking of programs and tools to help navigate massive winter storms better. It will also help residents stay up to date about snow alerts in the city of Sioux Falls. Anyone who has questions for Mayor Paul Ted Haken can easily reach out to him on his social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter or by emailing him. That's all coming up on this edition of Sunday Focus. Our daughter was back. We had sanity back in our family life. The tools they gave us as a family, we will always be able to use. I'm John from Sioux Falls. We had to do something because our home was in havoc. We brought our daughter to Hope Harbor in Marshall, Minnesota when she was 15. The change was night and day. Hope Harbor helps struggling girls and boys 12 through 17. When you think there's nothing more you can do, there is hope. Hope Harbor. Go to HopeHarborMN.org. Thousands of people contact InventHelp monthly about their invention or new product. Do you think companies would be interested in your idea? Do you want to try to get a patent? Call InventHelp now. Best of all, the call and information are free. InventHelp keeps your idea confidential, explaining every step of the invention process. We create professional materials and submit them to companies who are looking for new ideas in your category. We have more than 9,000 companies who have agreed to review new ideas in confidence. If a company shows interest in manufacturing, your invention, we can negotiate on your behalf. We have helped over 10,000 clients receive patents. We offer 3D modeling and animation, prototyping services, and we use state-of-the-art technology to present client ideas to additional companies. Join people just like you who made the call to invent help. You have nothing to lose. To get your free inventor's information, call 1-800-352-1609. That's 1-800-352-1609. Again, 1-800-352-1609. Welcome back to another edition of Sunday Focus. It's been a busy couple of years here in the city of Sioux Falls, and it's been a busy month, I'd say. And a guy that seems to know everything about the city of Sioux Falls, all the ins and outs, he's joining us in the studio right now. It's Sioux Falls Mayor Paul Ted Hagen. Good morning, Mayor. Christina, how are you? I'm great. You know, I have to ask you this question first. Are you shoveled out yet? I'm shoveled out, but you know what? I think people think that the uh, the mayor street gets plowed first and all that. I think I was in like the the 90, 90 to hundred percent range when uh, when the plows came through. So I was one of the last. I gave my public works guys a hard time about that that it took so long. But uh, you know, it's been a crazy month with mm-hmm. weather. I mean, we've had we haven't had this much snow in a long time. So. Uh, we just had a lot of work that's been going on with not only plowing the streets and getting this cleaned mm-hmm. up, but then also we haul all this away. And uh, and honestly, that leads right into pothole season as well. So, I mean, the, the potholes are just springing up mm-hmm. all over because we've plowed the streets to death and the freeze thaw has been rough. So uh, continued patience. That's been my theme for folks uh, over the last several weeks and we'll be into the spring. Just patience as we work through this weather. Absolutely. We'll get more into the snow and what's to come here. But the last time we talked, it was right before the city election. Have you had some time for yourself after the election? What's life been like so far? Yeah, it's been great. You know, the the first term was really chaotic, if I'm just being candid. I mean, there yeah. was we had... I always talk about CPR in 2020. We had the C for for COVID. We had P for political tensions. We had R for racial tensions with George Floyd's murder and all that. So the next two years 
we're just nuts. And it seems like we've settled into a little bit of uh, more of a, a normal rhythm, right? Mm-hmm. So pandemic's an afterthought for most people. Uh, and obviously the political tensions and some of the social justice issues from 2020 have kind of uh, uh, calmed down a little bit. They're mm-hmm. still very much a focus. So so post-election, uh, this second term has started off very well. It feels like we're just focusing on the business of the city instead of just being on uh, on defense to whatever is thrown at us. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to be proud as uh, the mayor, too, knowing how many votes generated throughout the city, not only for you, but just overall was pretty overwhelming. Do you think that this shows that the residents have confidence in not just your abilities, but what the city of Sioux Falls has to offer? It seems like right now, Christina, there is an optimism and really I would say for the most part, a satisfaction with the direction that the city is going. Now, don't interpret that for everything's great in Sioux Falls and we can kick our feet up. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of challenges that we're working through right now. But overall, if you have if you step back and say, hey, overall, is Sioux Falls in a better place today than it was four or five years ago, given all those circumstances Mm -hmm. that we've been through? Uh, I think most people would say it is, but there's also... uh, a lot of issues that come with growth, crime, housing, workforce, things like that, that we're really focused on as we grow. Now that you're settled into your second term, let's talk about those goals that you have for the city for this 2023 and beyond. So let's talk about this year first. Yeah, you know, my number one goal for 2023, uh, because I've I've been getting asked this a lot as we flip the calendar to a new year, is to continue to stay real focused on public safety and crime. You know, as the city grows, one of the byproducts of growth is crime. There's no, there's simply no way a city grows in people without crime because people by their nature uh, are, are sinful. <laughs> people <laughs> screw up. Reckless. <laughs> and so reckless. So as you add more people, you're going to have some people that will commit crimes. What we have to stay focused on, though, is how are we prosecuting uh, people who commit crimes? What's the parole and the Department of Correction, Corrections piece look like in that process? Are we properly uh, resourcing law enforcement with the number of officers that we have, the, the equipment that they need to do their jobs. Uh, and so I think what, that's probably the issue that most people want to talk to me about is public safety and make sure we kind of continue to stay as, as tough on crime as we can here in the city. Two other issues, though, that aren't far behind that. Uh, one is housing. Mm-hmm. You know, housing is a challenge. And if I'm being very candid, I uh, went swam at our great Midco Aquatic Center, pulled up there at 515. There's a lady sleeping in her car next to uh, next to me where I pulled in. She'd been there all night. It was all bundled up. Um, doesn't have a place to live. Doesn't have a place to stay. I don't know any of the circumstances on why she's sleeping in her car, but she is. And it made it was a reminder to me on the housing challenges across the board, whether it be in the homeless community all the way up to, you know, move up housing, executive level housing, housing stuff. But it's also a byproduct of a very wonky economic environment right now with interest rates, Mm -hmm. supply chain issues. uh, Just the cost of doing anything is so much more expensive in in the building environment right now. So we're working through that and and we're we're basically looking for singles, not home runs. Because what I mean by that is there's no one thing that you'll do that will say, oh, all right, housing's fixed. Now let's see. You just got to keep hitting singles. Yeah. And a lot of singles can win a can win a game, but it's not exciting or sexy, but uh, it works. And then the third issue I think that will be a big focus in 2023 is continued focus on infrastructure. You know, we opened up by talking about roads and potholes and things like that. Uh, infrastructure is near and dear to my heart in terms of making sure our wastewater capacity is uh, continues to support the growth that we're seeing, uh, that the roads are taken care of. We've seen a lot more traffic as the city grows. So some of those interchanges, uh, 41st and then I-229, for instance, in 2023, will open up that diverging diamond, which will help traffic flow tremendously over mm-hmm. there. So uh, a lot of infrastructure projects on the radar in the next year. I can say one project that I was excited about I can't, I'm so bad with street names, but it's right along Western Avenue, kind of down the road from JL Beers, and there's a a gas station, something like that. That whole intersection opened up, and for me, where I live, it's helped out my commute tremendously just by bypassing some of the side streets and even the traffic, like what you mentioned. Right, yeah, that's 49th, and 49th will go eventually all the way to 41st Street, and that 41st, or excuse me, over to uh, Minnesota. Mm Mm-hmm. 
And that whole Minnesota 49th interchange is going to be totally redesigned because it's it's a cluster, if I'm being totally honest right now. Mm-hmm. It was engineered that way at a time when we had way less traffic. Yeah. And so uh, so some of those things are on the radar. We'll get started. Veterans Parkway South will get started this year. That's uh, basically a mirror of I-229 to the south of town, which will also help with traffic flow. So a lot of big projects as we uh, become a big city. Now, I want to go back to what you were talking about, public safety and crime. What have the trends that you've been noticing? I believe that report came out uh, about a month ago now. So uh, overall, our crime per capita is fairly level. So what I mean by that is, you know, we have, and the stat I often use is we have about five to six violent crimes that are committed per thousand residents. And that's been the way that way for the last decade. Um but as you get more residents, you know, if you get 7,000 more residents a year, which we got, and on average 1,000 residents commit five violent crimes, so that's 35, if you do the math, more violent crimes we'll have this year. Mm-hmm. Those could be homicides. Those could be violent assaults on a police officer. So you'll hear about more crime because there is more crime because there's more people. So my, my, my message always to people is like crime is still manageable. The per capita number is, is staying fairly flat. And that's what we want to keep is we don't want to see that per capita number grow. Um, you know, assaults are tough. Uh, uh, we, we've seen some more violent assaults this year than in previous years. Our homicides have been fairly flat. Uh, narcotic seizures uh, continue to always, always grow, it seems yeah. like, year after year. But two encouraging trends, suicide, completed suicides were down uh, last year, uh, and also drug overdoses uh, were down last year. So uh, that was good to see on that front. So we just continue to adjust to the needs of the community with public safety and say, okay, what's the need right now and what resources do we have to make sure we have in play to keep Sioux Falls safe? Sioux Falls Mayor Paul Ted Hagen is in the studio with us right now. Before we, we move on to the crazy winter weather that we've been experiencing, it seems like a lot of your plans for this second term is responding to the city's growth. It, it, that's the theme mm-hmm. uh, right now is last year, uh, so in 2021, we grew by about 7,000 people. And in this past year, we'll release our population numbers here soon. Probably going to be close to that 7,000 number again. So 14,000 people in the last two years. That's a, that's a Mitchell, South Dakota that we've grown by in the last two years. Wow. And so when you think of it like that, that's 14,000 people that uh, need homes, uh, that need jobs, that need toilets that flush, that need uh, <laughs> you know cops to respond to their calls in emergencies. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the, the needs to keep up with that level of growth uh, are tremendous. And so um, we have you know, limited tax sources in this state. You know, that's what people love about it. It also makes it challenging as a city to have all these growing needs and people want more parks and they want uh, you know, more services and better transit and all these things. But we have very finite revenue sources that we have to do that within. So I know there's talk in the legislature about taxes this year and grocery tax and property tax and all that stuff. Uh, I think what I always remind people about is it's, it's I hate taxes as much as anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish we could get rid of all of them, but every every tax we trim, it's great, uh, but it also limits our ability to deliver services. Uh, so there's that fine that fine line that you walk where you don't want to be an overtaxed community, but you want to have the appropriate level of revenues coming in so you can take care of a growing community. Coming from the land of taxes, as I like to call yeah. it, Sioux Falls is doing great so far. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Illinois is a train wreck when it comes to ta- they'll tax Boy. anything they can. So <laughs> No kidding. Now, you were talking about the beginning, the last four years with COVID. Another aspect of that four years is that crazy spring weather that we had in 2019. And I guess it's only fitting that you start off your new term with two new winter yeah. storms <laughs> in the mix. So uh, let's go back here. Since snow has been around the city more often lately, what are the current snow policies right now for the city? Well, where we sit today is, you know, one for homeowners, you got to have, you know, your sidewalks cleared off. Mm-hmm. And typically that, that policy is within 48 hours of a, of a snow event ending, you have to have your sidewalk cleared off. We're, we've been given a lot of grace on that because of uh, the start, stop, start, stop of the mm-hmm. snow we've been having over several weeks. But uh, so one, we encourage people to get out and remove that the snow. If they don't do that, uh, they'll get a warning. If it's still not done, then the city hires a contractor to do that and the homeowner gets billed for that work. So 
Uh, the second thing is always when uh, when we issue a snow alert, you got to get your cars off the streets. You know? And so we are still towing some cars that are they're still on the streets that haven't been moved in weeks. Uh, and we have to get, get the plows out and we have to clear things out. So those are the two big ones right now. Um, but, you know, we try as, as, as much as people may think the city is challenging and we're just looking to ticket people those are just really last resorts i mean we want to give people a lot of grace Mm -hmm. because we know especially this last snow event with the amount of snow we got mailboxes are covered ice is at the end of people's it's it was a very tough snow uh and it's been very cold so it hasn't been able to melt much so we're trying to give as much grace as we can Usually when snow alerts are issued, they come with uh, different zones that need to be cleared out. What do those zones mean? Downtown Sioux Falls would be would be in our, well, most of the roads down there would be emergency routes mm-hmm. that we have to clear for kind of east-west traffic flow. We always just encourage people, don't worry about memorizing your zones or where the plow's out. Go to SiouxFalls.org slash snow, right? And you can learn everything you need to know about what zones we're plowing when, uh, when cars need to be removed. And so uh, we also have snow alerts that you can sign up for via text, and it, we push out information that way. So um, the zones are, the zones are uh, an interesting part because you start with three and you end with one. Uh, and typically you think, okay, you start with one and then two and then three. So SiouxFalls.org slash snow is always the best way to figure out where we're at with plowing. And very soon, I shouldn't, I maybe shouldn't even be teasing this, but we have what we call AVLs, automatic vehicle locators, that people will be able to soon go online and track the snow plows and see where they're at. So it's like, okay, should I go out and shovel right now? Or, okay, there's a plow three streets over that's going to be past my house in the next hour. So I'm going to hold tight because the plow is going to be past. And right now people just kind of have to guess that based on listening. Mm-hmm. Can I hear the beeping of them right, bapping yeah. up? Are they near me? So, yeah. I think that's a great idea. It is great. We're piloting it internally right now and it should have that ready for the public uh, in the near future. And you weren't wrong with the snow total. Just last week, I was talking to uh, Todd Highcamp with the National mm-hmm. Weather Service, and he said, yeah, this has been the most snow that Sioux Falls has seen in a number of years. Pretty underwhelming, he said, the last five years. But believe it or not, this is kind of the right amount of snow of what we should be seeing in this area. Right. And usually with, with snow alerts and snow policies, that comes with that budget. So let's go over that snow removal budget. What is it at right now? So uh, I'm, I'm not going to give get the exact number correct because uh, it changes daily. But mm-hmm. um, we, based on last year where we ended uh, 2022, we ended about budget neutral. So uh, then the reason we ended budget neutral is we had to obviously plow a bunch towards the end of the year and issue several snow alerts, but we didn't have any in January to April. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we run a calendar year fiscal year. So we were absolutely on track for 2022. Uh, 2023, uh, right now, we're starting on track as well. Uh, and so if we would get uh, four or five more snow alerts before the end of the year will probably be a different story. But we haven't, you know, probably in the budget, the opportunity to, to issue, you know, one, two, three more snow alerts and still be within our budget. I always use the number, and, and, and I think my public works guys may get a little nervous, you know, if I say it this way, but I, I always use about 150 grand per inch when we, ha- we get a snow event and have issue of snow alerts. We get five inches of snow, uh, $750,000 to clean out the city uh, and to plow all the roads. So it's very expensive uh, to do snow removal (laughs) in a city that is 82 square miles uh, like Sioux Falls. Absolutely. So how many employees with the city would you say work on snow removal and the same goes with the number of plows? So uh, the number of cities, or excuse me, the number of employees that uh, um, uh, work on snow removal in the city uh, is across both departments typically they're across our street department and our parks department so uh, we have a lot of employees within the city that have uh, cdl licenses that that do that work but then we also employ a bevy of contractors as well Uh, so you'll see people hauling away snow and they're from all different organizations and different contractors within the city so uh, there's there's several hundred people that help with this operation between contractors uh, and city employees and not just the people that you see driving the plows but we have all kinds of people behind the scenes that are doing uh, the dispatching work our communications team we have a 
what's called a Slack channel, where we have probably 50 people in it that all have different responsibilities, uh, including me, uh, that has certain responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So a snow operation is not just the people behind uh, the steering wheels of the plows, although they're very, very critical. Uh, there's a whole bunch of city employees that all kind of come together to make sure we respond appropriately. Sioux Falls Mayor Paul Ted Haken is in the studio right now. You were teasing that the city is going to have somewhat of a plow tracker, hopefully, in the near future. When do plows clear the streets? Like, when are they supposed to regularly do it when snow falls? A lot of it really depends on what the radar is looking like and what the weather is looking like. So if, if we've gotten a whole bunch of snow mm -hmm. uh, and there's still another two inches on the radar for the next three hours. We're not going to send the plows out because we'll have to return. That was a little bit of frustration point for some people, this last snow event, because they were like, well, why haven't the plows been out yet? You guys haven't even started plowing. It's like, yeah, because the radar is showing we're going to continue to be getting snow. This is just a massive snow event. Uh, we try to get out as soon as the snow ends and try to have the city cleared out in at the most uh, 72 hours. But a lot of times it's uh, it's much quicker than it, than that. So that's kind of our policy. A lot of times we'll also just position those plows out in the community. If you ever see a snow plow just sitting idling in a park, mm -hmm. it's not because the guy's taking a break. It's because we see on the radar that the snow event is, is scheduled to end in 30, 45 minutes. And we want to have them positioned, ready to go like ASAP when we give them the green light to get going. The hours that the city workers put in the last couple of weeks, the numbers are coming out and it, it's just astonishing. You know, we, we can't thank them enough for what they did this past snowstorm and even during Christmas week with that storm that came in. Now, for the future, beyond this, this snow was unprecedented. You know, you, you, there's no way that you can manage 13, 14 inches at a time. But in the future, do you think that there could be more done with snow removal? I think, um, and of course I'm biased, but I think the city does an absolutely incredible job. And, and I just had someone come back from Fargo last week, and they just had a big snow event. And they said, if anybody has issues with how the city of Sioux Falls does snow, they should go up to Fargo and see uh, a lot of their side streets that don't even get touched uh, in a snow event. So we are one of the, uh, the few cities that absolutely clears every single lane mile of road when we issue a snow alert. And that's very, very rare to, uh, to do. Uh, so I believe we do a great job. Uh, it's a very big lift to do, mm -hmm. and it's a very unpredictable job where um, you never know what hand you're going to be dealt until the last flake, you know, falls, uh, and then you get out there and do it. So I think we're doing a great job, and I look forward to uh, uh, always to feedback. You know, some people have ideas on things we can do mm -hmm. differently. Trust me, we get a lot of feedback, a lot of <laughs> a lot of armchair plow drivers, but uh, but it's a it's a big operation. I think we do a great job with it every time. Any new businesses that are coming to the city or any businesses you'd like to see? Well, we've had a big couple of years of economic development and businesses relocating here. Uh, and also, whether it's new franchises or uh, um, think of like a place called CMB Operations, move their headquarters from Minneapolis mm -hmm. uh, to Sioux Falls or one of the largest John Deere dealers in the country. Uh, so there's wins like that that a lot of people maybe don't even realize. And then, of course, we have the Amazons of the world. We're actually going to cut a ribbon on them and get them uh, fully operational and going out there. Uh, so businesses continue to be um, uh, attracted to Sioux Falls, mm -hmm. to our tax climate, uh, to, I think, the infrastructure climate, too, and the investments that we keep making in infrastructure. So I don't uh, see that uh, ending anytime soon. You know, what people always want to ask me about is some of the big ones. You're, I know you're always interested in Dunkin' Donuts and oh, other people. Are, yeah, right? <laughs> Other people are, you know, always get asked about Trader Joe's and it seems like, you know, the Argus always did an article every year. Here's mm -hmm. what people want to see, Raising Cane's and all these different uh, kind of, we love our restaurants in Sioux mm -hmm. Falls. Uh, my response to that is always, those businesses will come here when mm -hmm. their business model dictates it, when mm -hmm. they see a demand in Sioux Falls market. Um, for instance, there's some great coffee franchises that are out there, uh, not in addition to Duncan, <laughs> that I can't figure out why they haven't hung a shingle here. Um, but this is not on their growth map, and that's okay, because I think we have a lot of great small businesses. We've mm -hmm. got a lot of great local businesses that are franchises that uh, are great in our community from a restaurant, coffee, uh, retail standpoint as well. I almost did this for you when I was back home for the holidays. I, I almost got you not only a Chicago Bears shirt, because... 
Let's face it, they're the best team out there. I'm kidding with really? that. Really? Yeah, I'm very kidding about that. <laughs> but I almost got you a Dunkin' Donuts Christmas ornament. I'm not kidding. Well, <laughs> we we had Dunkin' Donuts in Sioux Falls. I've, I've been back told in the day. those rumors. Yeah. You know, their, their model just evolved. They used to be all over, and then they pivoted. They were just donuts. Basically, yeah. they were just donuts. And before the, <laughs> before the coffee phase, you know, really came into being, you know, 15, 20 years ago when coffee became really hip, mm-hmm. then they kind of re-energized. So the new phase of Dunkin' Donuts has not made their way into Sioux Falls yet. Maybe someday. <laughs> Anything currently happening in the city that you're looking forward to, like Burger Battle, for instance, have you tried any yet? Uh, I'm going to be trying some burgers downtown. Burger Battle's great because it gets people to come out and, and visit our restaurant community and our downtown at a time when um, business is pretty slow downtown, mm-hmm. January to, to March. It's cold. Uh, the holidays are over. Uh, so that's a message I always like to reinforce this time of year is to support small businesses. Uh, this is the Q1 is very hard on small businesses mm-hmm. typically uh, in communities. And so uh, if you can get out, support our small businesses, not just downtown, but across this entire city. All right. Once again, it's Sioux Falls Mayor Paul Tanaken. Now, Mayor, if anybody has any questions about what's going on in the city or questions for you, what's the website that residents can go check out or maybe what's your email? <laughs> Well, the, the best way to ever find out what's going on in the city is to, uh, one, follow us on our social media channels. Typically, it's City, city Sioux Falls uh, is the handle that we use on most of our social media. My personal social media is at Paul Haken, and I, I do a pretty good job of trying to keep people up up to date on what's going on in the city with some fun sprinkled in there mm-hmm. as well. Um, but mayor at SiouxFalls.org uh, is an email address that I, I do check, my entire office checks. So anyone ever has a question, comment, um, concern, they can hit us up at that email, and we usually can track them down and answer. Yeah, speak about fun on social media. I noticed your face is glowing a little bit today. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> my, my youngest daughter's been getting into these mud masks and all these different masking things. So uh, being the good sport dad I am, I've been doing masks with her, and we've, we've been having fun with it. Thank you so much for joining us this yeah, morning. Yeah, my pleasure. One in four Americans have a disability. I'm one of them. I'm also a working mom who cares deeply about making sure every child with a disability thrives by getting their access needs met. We've got a trusted ally by our side. Easter Seals provides children and families the foundation for lifelong success through early learning programs, skills training, and prep for college and career. That's my Easter Seals. Make it yours. Join us at EasterSeals.com. One day I just said, we can't keep living like this. Our lives at home were very different from our lives outside of home because we were afraid every day. I'm Jody, and my son was 16 when I finally took him to Hope Harbor in Parker, South Dakota. Today, he's a senior in high school, planning to go to college and start a career in aviation mechanics. He looked at me one day after coming home and said, I've learned I can't let anxiety and depression control me. There is hope. Hope Harbor. Go to hopeharbormn.org. It's been said that when someone you love has Parkinson's, you have Parkinson's. The Parkinson's Foundation knows that the disease doesn't just affect the diagnosed. It affects everyone who supports and helps care for them. If you have questions, the Parkinson's Foundation has answers. We can help you understand the disease. And give you tips for living a better life. Find your answers at Parkinson.org or call 1-800-473-4636. The Parkinson's Foundation. Better Better lives together. If you're driving on the interstate, a state highway, a county highway, through town, or on a gravel road, this message is for you. Buckle up, don't skip the click. Crashes don't discriminate, they happen everywhere. Hi, I'm Trooper Peterson with the South Dakota Highway Patrol, reminding you that wearing your seatbelt is one of the best ways to protect yourself while driving. Buckle up, don't skip the click. This message brought to you by the South Dakota Highway Patrol and Results Town Square Media. Thousands of people contact InventHelp monthly about their invention or new product. Do you think companies would be interested in your idea? Do you want to try to get a patent? Call InventHelp now. Best of all, the call and information are free. InventHelp keeps your idea confidential, explaining every step of the invention process. We create professional materials and submit them to companies who are looking for new ideas in your category. We have more than 9,000 companies who have agreed to review new ideas in confidence. If a company shows interest in manufacturing, 
manufacturing your invention, we can negotiate on your behalf. We have helped over 10,000 clients receive patents. We offer 3D modeling and animation, prototyping services, and we use state-of-the-art technology to present client ideas to additional companies. Join people just like you who made the call to InventHelp. You have nothing to lose. To get your free inventor's information, call 1-800-352-1609. That's 1-800-352-1609. Again, 1-800-352-1609. I'm Christine Manica, and you've been listening to Sunday Focus. I'd like to thank my guest, Sioux Falls Mayor Paul Tanagan, for joining the program today. Join us again next week for another edition of Sunday Focus. Sunday Focus is a public affairs program of Results Radio, Town Square Media, Sioux Falls.